I'm Mike Palm. I'm the singer guitar player of the punk band Agent Orange. Well, the first punk band I ever saw was the Mechanics. They were the uh, first. Orange County band uh, to really kind of influence all the rest of us. So anybody else you can mention, Social Distortion, Adolescence, Agent Orange, that was the band that we all kind of followed around town. The Mechanics. Uh, man, I really, I really like the early Hobie team. <laughs> Uh, you know, all, all those old movies of them. And their matching jackets. Hobie. Well, Generation X. Generation X never really came to the States as far as I know, so that's the one probably more than any of them. Wish I would have seen it, never saw it. Um, and then as far as original lineups, something that I miss that I have no explanation for is I never saw the Dead Kennedys back in the day. Everyone I know saw him multiple times. Where was I? Ooh, that one's pretty easy, really. I think it's the uh, centerfold skateboarder magazine shot of Tony Alva at Wallows. <laughs> That's it. Serious business, man. If you ever skated that thing, you know. Skating that thing on a Logan Ursi with Road Riders. That could not have been easy. <laughs> wow, that's a really hard one. Uh, no, it's not. It's The Clash. You, Joe. God, I have a lot of good friends. This one's going to get me in trouble. Well, 
when I was a kid, I wanted to break my wrist just so I could skate just like Greg Weaver. Herbie Fletcher in a pool on clay wheels. Gosh, I sure like Pedro Barros. Ben Rayborn. Jeff Grosso. Well, I'm gonna be technical about it because it has to be punk rock and I'm sorry, Darby was just, <sighs> Darby was punk. Great lyricist, great performer, never knew what was going to happen. Punk rock. The Hobie Waffle Top Board. Still looking for one. The Damned at the Whiskey A Go Go. First one's called Our Fall. It's fucking good. Listen to it. Get out and roll. Coolest motherfucker this week, I'd say is Carlos, Ramp Local. At Jamestown Skate Products, Jamestown, New York. Uh, on the beach in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Absolute lunacy. I don't know what you call him. You've seen that Japanese guy that deals with those cool things where he wiggles the board between his legs and stuff? Those are cool. Does the little sticker that came with lightning bolt surf wax count? Because everybody had one of those on their Logan Risky, right? Right? Give him enough rope. Gotta go with the clash, sorry. Well, for me, close to my heart, Lester Kasai bailing on frontside channel air in the combi pool behind the band while we played, doing a Superman down the drain. 
Well done, Lester. Oh, God, these are so hard. I think maybe Julian Stranger, the Evil Can Evil Ward. Pat Smear on guitar. <laughs> no, no, it's gonna end up being the germs. <laughs> <laughs> Marky Roman on drums. Tony Kinman from the Dills on bass. Richie Stotts from the Plasmatics on guitar. Can it be a dead guy singing? Darby. Give me, give me that, give me, give me that. Sonic producer by the Dead Boys. That'll do. You know, I saw, I saw, I see, see videos. I'm trying to remember who it was. It was a day one song doing uh, like one footed blunt to fakie or some weird thing. Like, well, do you know what I'm talking? Oh, no, no. Uh, Fakey manual backward down the, down the transition or something weird? I'm in a state, state of confusion. Zoom. He always looks like he's having fun. I would have to say our cover version of Metallica's Seek and Destroy because it is quite literally a one take song. And nobody knew that it was going to turn out that way. It was one of those things where I just said, Press record. The drummer thinks we're warming up. One take that one. It just happened, you know? It just happened on its own, really, you know? Because I. Well, you know, it's amazing to tell you the truth. When I started, <clears throat> when I started the band, right about the same time, uh, all my skate gear just fell apart. Bearings dried out, snapped the tail off my decent pool board, the only decent board I had. And then I spent a bunch of money on equipment, bought a guitar, bought, a, bought an amplifier. So it was weird. It was a small shift there where I didn't really have any skate stuff, you know. And I didn't skate for a little while there. But then, once the band got rolling, things got kind of back to normal. Then I kind of started to pick it up from there. That's when kind of when independent trucks started coming around. So, put together a new board, started skating ditches and junk again. But it took a little while. I mean, it was the kind of thing. It's like if you're into skateboarding, then you're into like high energy music, even pre punk rock. I mean, Tony Alva, you know, he wasn't sitting around listening to The Grateful Dead, you know. He was at least, you know, he was, had, he was cranking some Ted Nugent, you know, and that was punk rock for its time, really, you know, but it, it has to do with the energy of the music. I, I think that's the main thing. It just, there was really no way to keep it apart, you know, I mean, skateboarding needed a soundtrack. There's no way around that, and it sure wasn't going to be Elton John. Well, the connection for Skate Visions had to have been Lester Kasai. You know, just from skating Sadlands, hanging out, you know, I think he probably somehow mentioned it to them or I'm not sure exactly how he just made the decision. And it was shot like on a Sunday. It's a pretty slow day at the park. You know, just showed up and set up and eight hours later, we had it in the can. <laughs> We were on a tour in Europe with U.S. Bombs, and uh, we were all together, 18 guys on one bus. It was really fun. 
And uh, one night at about 4.30 in the morning, the driver decided to pull over and get some coffee. Uh, Dwayne thought he was getting gas, so he got off to uh, use the restroom. He shuffled off in some fuzzy slippers and a cutoff t-shirt and some shorts. And uh, the driver got in the bus and left without him. So uh, sometime around 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning when everybody started getting up and moving around the bus, we realized that Dwayne wasn't there. Uh, meanwhile, he had somehow finagled, um, I don't know how he did it, considering he didn't have a scent with him, he didn't have an ID, he doesn't speak the language, but he was able to arrange for uh, the booking agency to send a car and a driver, pick him up, and he was able to make it to the festival show at noon. Well done, Dwayne. <laughs> Free alcohol. Free alcohol. Someday, someone, somewhere, somehow is going to make you understand. These words will drill into your head. You will do anything they say They will have power over you You will not question their authority You know what they can do I shake my head, I don't know what to say I see my chance to turn and walk away I will not be a part of this moment I just can't take that chance because I see my opportunity to shout the last goodbye. The last goodbye. I bet you never did it.